I'm 16 years old. I got pregnant by somebody I work with. He's 18 and is about to graduate high school. He's planning to join the military after he graduates. He's not my boyfriend. We were never in a relationship like that. I mean, I wish he was, but he doesn't seem interested in that. We're friends. He flirts with me, I lost my virginity to him. He didn't force me or anything like that. I've had sex with him multiple times. I'm 15 weeks pregnant now. Everyone knows. Well, not everyone because I'm still hiding it from a lot of people. But he knows and my parents know. I'm embarrassed by it. I feel like an idiot, like a joke, like trash. I just wish I could hide until after the baby's born. I want to never leave my house. My parents are basically forcing me to give the baby up for adoption. I live in a state with heavy abortion restrictions. It's way too late to even get one now. My parents don't believe in abortion either. They told me this is my punishment for getting pregnant that I deserve to have to deal with being pregnant now. They've decided that I'm giving the baby away and have already set up a meeting with an adoption agency. They say they won't let me ruin my life with a baby, and they aren't going to raise my baby either. So, this is the only other option. My mom keeps saying you'll thank us later. I didn't get pregnant on purpose. I don't really want to be a mom right now. I turned 17 over the summer and will only be starting my junior year next year. At the same time, going through pregnancy and giving birth just to give me baby away terrifies me. I don't know if I can live with it. It literally makes me feel like I want to throw up or pass out. I feel like I have no choice but to go along with what my parents want. It's not like I could support myself let alone me and a baby. I could never just do it on my own. I was too scared to get an abortion earlier on before I told my parents I was pregnant. I was so scared that I'd get in trouble, but now I realize that probably would have been the easiest thing for me. If anyone reading this has given a baby up for adoption and survived it, please let me know what it was like. Do you get over it? Do you really end up feeling like it's the best thing for them and you're able to just live with it? I'm 20 weeks pregnant now and will turn 17 within the next few weeks. My parents are still forcing my to give my baby up for adoption. We've met with an adoption agency. The adoption counselor knows that I don't want to do adoption. She asked to speak with me privately without my parents present to ask me a series of questions. I was honest and told her I didn't want to give my baby away, but I had no other choice. She seems to feel bad about it and told me that I will ultimately have to sign the papers after the baby is born. My parents cannot sign the papers. Unfortunately, without my parents' help I have other options. The adoption counselor talked to us about the option of my parents adopting my baby, which I don't really want either. No worries, my parents aren't interested in raising another baby. My parents want me to look at the potential families. I'm trying to look at them. It's so weird thinking that I'm looking at parents for my own baby. I know I'm not ready to be a mom, but it's still so weird. None of this feels like it's happening to me. I've talked to the baby's father. He graduated high school and goes off to basic training later this summer. I think he'd be fine with adoption. He said he doesn't really know what other options we have. We could get married since the military would at least help pay for a place to live and wed have medical benefits, but I can't get married without parental consent. We don't love each other. What kind of marriage would that be? But it seems like the only realistic solution. I hate the idea of being married at 17 years old and to a person who doesn't genuinely want to be married to me. So then another option which still involves marriage might be for his parents to help out, even take care of the baby, and let me see him or her until I'm 18 and don't need my parents' permission to get married. That doesn't really seem fair to them. He could try to object to an adoption, but it's not guaranteed that his wishes would be respected. Plus, then what happens to the baby? His parents seem like good people. I don't know them well, but I've met them. 
They're worried about what this will do to his future, but they told my parents they believe it should be our decision and that it's their job as parents to help us. My parents basically said it's their job to protect me and that all of the responsibility will fall on me and it'll be my life that's ruined. Our families met to discuss everything, but it was really just parents telling them what was going to happen and that they and their son have no say. OP on the ideal adoption situation she would like to see happening to the child. OP, I don't have an ideal adoption situation right now because I still can't accept adoption. But probably two gay guys. It's the women in these couples I look at that seem more fake than the men for the most part. Again, I know this sounds terrible to say. Something about a lot of the women is just really rubbing me the wrong way. Maybe two lesbians, because the few lesbian couples I've seen at least seem more genuine than the straight women. Well, in some cases the gay couples could have their own biological children, even if the children didn't share both parents' DNA. But, I'm just more drawn to those couples and the profiles I've seen just seem more genuine. But yes, it feels like nobody is good enough for my baby. I acknowledge that it might not seem rational. If you've never been in the position of having to look at families, all complete strangers, to give your baby to, you probably can't fully understand. I'm allowed to be picky. This could be the biggest, most important decision in my entire life, and this is the only part of the whole adoption thing I actually have much of a say in. I'm only 20 weeks pregnant, not 38. There's no rule stating I have to have a family picked out yet. Some people take longer picking out a new car to buy. It's not as if adoption was a choice I came to on my own and even feel positive about, so yet looking at potential adoptive families is going to give me some feelings. As I stated, it's not a matter of thinking I can or cannot provide a better life. It's a totally bizarre and heartbreaking thing to do to read through profile of families to give your baby to. And there are a ton of families. Someone comment, because of the 700,000 people in the U.S. that have died of AIDS, most of which was transmitted by people with penises having unprotected sex, it was a hard-fought battle by largely gay, marginalized AIDS activists, not conservatives. And condoms were stigmatized as hell back then. My university, a state university in New England, was pretty far ahead when it came to promoting condom use among the general population in the 1980s. They took one look at the STD rate among the general student population, one look at the way HIV and AIDS was spreading sexually, one look at how condoms were the best means of stopping the spread of all kinds of STIs, and decided that education and destigmatization was the way to go. So we had condom balloon launches, and guess how many condoms are in this giant jar in the library and win them all during Valentine's week. I still have a condom compact somewhere that they gave us in like 1988. I thought this was absolutely normal, only to find out that when I went to law school several years later, my classmates who were RAs in undergrad dorms could not even mention condoms on pain of being fired from their positions. Story 2 My girlfriend and I have been together for five years. We're both in our mid-twenties, met in college and have been living together for around three years. A little over six months ago, we had to find a new a place to live rather quickly. Thankfully, we found a great place in the city, a little on the expensive side, but we make it work. A week into living here, my girlfriend met one of our neighbors, Jenna, who lives almost directly across the hall. Jenna lives there with her boyfriend and they're roughly our age, maybe a couple of years older. By the end of December, my girlfriend and Jenna became pretty well acquainted. I don't know if I'd say friends because they never hung out outside of them inviting us to dinner and vice versa, but I do think my girlfriend and Jenna texted every now and then. Jenna is a nice enough but her boyfriend Sam is a fucking asshole. He's arrogant and entitled, and I do not like him. My girlfriend didn't like him either in the beginning, her words, but eventually seemed to warm up to him. Eventually we learned that the two of them are in an open relationship. 
I've never really understood the whole open relationship thing, but it's really not my business so ultimately, I don't care. What does bother me is I've caught Sam straight up checking out my girlfriend, I've noticed Jenna noticing it too and being uncomfortable with it. I didn't think my girlfriend has noticed at first. About two months ago when my girlfriend and I were coming home from dinner with a friend we heard the two of them screaming at one another from inside their apartment. My girlfriend wanted to knock and see if things were okay, I wanted to leave it alone, so we knocked. Sam answered and says it wasn't the best time and Jenna pushed past him and left with a suitcase. He called after her but she told him to go fuck himself, and that was it. Two weeks later we didn't hear a thing from either of them. My girlfriend texted Jenna asking if she was okay and got no response. This next bit I only know because my girlfriend told me. She caught Sam as he was leaving, and she was coming home from work, and she asked him if things were okay. He confirmed they broke up, and that Jenna has moved out completely. The next day, while I was at work, my girlfriend went to his place to see how he was doing, and he explained to her what happened. It's not really relevant, but because I know some people may be curious, apparently he cheated and Jenna broke up with him. I feel like there's more to the story, but I don't know if that's all Sam told my girlfriend or if that's all she told me. Ever since my girlfriend and Sam have been texting pretty much every day if not every other day. I told her I'm a little uncomfortable with how close they've gotten. She said she feels bad because he doesn't really have anyone now. I told her it's his fault for being a cheater, and it bothered me she has sympathy for him. She agreed to dial it back but said she won't ignore him completely. Then I asked two really stupid questions. The first was, if she was attracted to Sam. I expected her to say no honestly because she's always told me that I'm exactly her type, looks and personality, and him and I are completely different. She said that's not a fair question, when I asked why she said she should be allowed to find other men attractive without it being an issue, and said surely I'm attracted to other women. I agreed, but I said it's different when it's a guy who's been I-fucking her at every opportunity. I took her silence after that as a yes, I also took it to mean she actually did notice him checking her out. The second stupid question was if she has the opportunity to sleep with him, guilt-free, would she? She again said I'm being unfair, because if she says yes, then I'll be pissed even though she'd have permission to do it. My response was, so that's a yes. We were quiet for a while after that until someone texted her. She looked at the message and then looked away, and I asked who it was. She didn't answer me and I got visibly upset. I started walking to our bedroom and grabbed a bag to pack some clothing. She followed me and said they're just friends. I asked if she would be willing to show me her phone, she hesitated but said yes, but the hesitation was enough for me. I grabbed my bag and my laptop and told her I just need to get away from here for a while and clear my head. She asked what that meant and I said I have to think about some things that left. So here I am, sitting in a hotel room, wondering what the fuck is happening in my relationship and wondering if I screwed things up, if she did or if we both did. Update 1. Well first of all I wanna say that I didn't expect this to blow up as much as it did and I wanna thank everyone for the encouraging comments and for reaching out personally, even if I didn't respond. Lots of people said that I made a lot of mistakes, not checking her phone, not confronting him, leaving after our fight. Hindsight I guess, but I just didn't want to be there anymore in that moment. I was able to reach out to Jenna. She confirmed her and Sam had an open relationship, but it was one-sided, which she said worked for the longest time, until it didn't. She said she told Sam after the first time we were invited for dinner my girlfriend was off limits. Then she confirmed she came home and caught them kissing. She also said it's not the first time he's broken the rules. She apologized for not telling me sooner, but said she just wants to put him behind her. She also asked me not to contact her again. I called my sister afterwards, as she's the one who helped me find Jenna's socials and we talked about me coming home for a while to clear my head. I said that entirely depends on what I find when I get home. I might have been able to forgive a kiss. 
When I got home last night our apartment was empty. It surprised me how not surprised I was that she wasn't there. I put my things down, took a deep breath, and went to his apartment. When he answered, I pushed on the door to open it wider, and my attention went immediately to her. I asked her if we could talk alone. When she didn't move and looked towards him, I said fuck it and pushed past him into his apartment. He sarcastically told me to come in and close the door. I told him I know about the kiss, she looked surprised, he didn't. He said, you talk to Jenna then, and I said yeah, she told me everything. He said he doubts that. I said I know he's cheated on Jenna before, and he admitted that he's broken the rules of their relationship before, but said Jenna isn't a saint either. He said their relationship was incredibly toxic on both sides and I said she seemed like a good person to me. He said I don't know her. They were together for seven years and he knows her better than anyone. I said I didn't believe him. My girlfriend told me that Jenna sent her really nasty messages when she texted her asking if she was okay and tried to apologize. I shrugged and said, so she had every right to be angry. Sam immediately jumped to her defense and said, at me, Paige didn't know the rules of our relationship, so for all she knew the kiss was within them. It was quiet for about a minute, and then I asked my girlfriend how long it took after I left for her to come knocking on his door. She told me I left her in relationship limbo and didn't know if I was even coming back. Which didn't answer my question, but I dropped it because I was never going to get an honest answer. I didn't need to ask if they slept together because she was in her underwear and a t-shirt and he was only wearing sweatpants. I went to leave and told her I'm moving back home and I'll be emailing our landlord and telling him I want out of the lease and that she'll be taking it over completely. She said she can't afford that, I told her I don't care. Then I left. I called my sister and she's making arrangements to come get me, but she's nine hours away and won't be able to make it until tomorrow or Tuesday. It gives me time to pack my shit at least. I'm not exactly loving that I'll be staying here for a day or two. Unfortunately, I can't turn off my feelings for her, and knowing she's across the hall getting fucked by another man isn't awesome but I can't afford the hotel again. I don't really know how I'm feeling right now. I went from anger to sadness, to anger again and now I just feel mom. So that's it. Again, wondering how we got here. Our relationship wasn't perfect and we had our issues but I never thought we'd end up here. Art 3 me's the great. May hurt now. But really bro. Good riddance. Even better that you confirm they cheated on you so you won't go on a limbo asking yourself questions you can't answer and blaming yourself for leaving before confirming something's happening. On your first post I was worried you'd spiral and blame yourself for leaving immediately. I'm so glad you were able to confirm it, so you now have no reasons to dwell on this crappy relationship. You'll be okay and better. OOP I do blame myself a little if I'm being honest. If I would've looked through her phone maybe I would've found out about the kiss sooner. I'm sure there's more that I both do and don't want answers to. It's too late now so I'm trying not to dwell on the what-ifs 